Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I'm going to tell you a funny story. Um, My son was, uh, he's got uh, the school dance tomorrow and he was talking about how his date got a spray tan. So here's the funny story. A few years back, I'd say maybe 10 years back or something like that, I was uh, out to dinner with some friends and of course we were having some, a few glasses of wine. And um, somehow the subject of spray tans comes up. And I told, um, (laughs) I don't know why, I don't remember why, but um, I told my buddy, I said, look, I said, uh, I would get one, but I wouldn't pay for it. And he goes, well, I'll meet you there tomorrow morning at 8 (laughs) a.m. And then I was kind of put in a corner. (laughs) And I'll have to find the picture somewhere. There's a, my wife took a picture. But anyway. There's a pic, the next morning I had to meet, I had like two or three of my friends meet because they had to see this. And I got a spray, a full, they said it had to be a full, they cranked it all the way up, a full spray tan from head to toe. Um, and I had, and then I had to, I think part of the deal was I had to like, you know, act, go, do what I would normally do on a weekend and go out, <laughs> go, go to the pool and all the different stuff. And so, yes, true story. The digital asset investor with a spray tan, it happened. I do have a picture of it too. I'll have to pull that. Um, Okay. New debt clock is live. Gold and silver prices significantly higher uh, as new currency is linked to gold, as Jim Rickard states it. This is from a devalued dollar as the global reserve currency being challenged by BRICS commodity linked currency. Look, folks. These jokers come out if the if the if these guys come out with a legitimate gold linked currency. I mean, this is almost like the this is almost like the uh, debt clock people are preparing for what they know is coming. I mean, look at this. They've got a twelve thousand six hundred thirty-two dollar an ounce gold um, dollar to gold ratio, five year dollar to gold gold ratio, ten year nine thousand three hundred fifty-three. I don't know how they come up with these calculations. I think silver, last time I looked, what was it, 50 something dollars an ounce or something? It may be more than that now. I don't know. I haven't looked in a long time. But $1,562 per ounce. A lot of people are more, more bullish on silver than they are gold. So now watch this from Subjective Views, who did something nice for me. I'm going to show you in a minute. Watch. And, and it's not that. It goes beyond that. Okay, this is deliberate. The and and understanding no that, that they are are working very diligently to bring in a new system. I know there's legislation right now to prevent the Federal Reserve from issuing a central bank digital currency. It's not going to do nothing. The Federal Reserve members are laughing. They're in their back room laughing their rear ends off because what's going to end up happening here is once when the central banks are done bringing this system to its knees and you and I with it okay um, our loving caring politicians in fact the same ones that are putting forth this legislation to the Fed to prevent it from issuing a central bank digital currency they're going to be begging for it on their knees You understand? Because that's how it's that's being the whole set up. Plan. That's how it's going to play out. This current system cannot be fixed. It's not meant to be fixed. It's on a it's pathway to destruction. This is deliberate and they're gonna issue in a new system. Period. That's all. I think we're all pretty much pathway on the same page. To destruction. That is a thumbnail because that's what we're on. And I believe it's a controlled demolition. Um now, subjective views provided me with this. Apparently, this is hap- I can't tell you how many times this has happened on this channel over the years. The people out there who, I think they, they literally, which they should, they literally feel sorry for me because my, of my lack of technological savvy. They see all these fancy YouTubers with fancy studios and they, they see this poor old guy out here 49 years old, not too old, but getting there. They see this old guy out here and, and they're like, oh, poor guy. He's got to put his 
DAI gold code for for his sponsor on a Google Docs. <laughs> Hey, and I'd feel sorry for me too. So I appreciate it. Subjective, subjective views literally put this little graphic together for me, put the Miles Franklin logo on there, put Miles Franklin precious metals on there, put code DAI gold that you got to use if you want to go to, uh, email or, or call them and get um, the best prices. Um, and they put my logo on there. So I, I really appreciate it. Here's what it looks like. And now we're in Google Docs, but we've got ourselves an actual graphic that looks good. Stuart Alderati had a problem with this. Let's play it again. The securities laws apply to crypto security tokens, and there's nothing incompatible with those tokens, with the securities Broken laws. Broken man. Investors still benefit from disclosure. Broken and investors little man. get to choose based on that disclosure. Investors benefit from laws against fraud and manipulation and and other um, conflicts in the markets. And we've just seen so many people hurt and lost their money, hoping for a better future. And there's so many huckster. Oh yeah, he's so worried about the people. Stuart Alderati says, what's most concerning to me and should be to you in the full video clip is the shocking admission of an unelected bureaucrat that he won't respect the decisions of courts. Yeah, <laughs> that should be disturbing. Where's, where are the congressmen that are pretending, parading and pretending to be good guys? Where are they? Don't tell me you couldn't get rid of this guy if you really wanted to. Don't tell me that for a minute. You could, you could turn the political screws until this guy was gone. It's not like Gary's an alpha or anything. The Stephen Naryoff tweet that, that uh, started it all has now got one million views. And we've got more whistleblower Steve Naryoff news. Check this out. This, um, this was a reply to his tweet from yesterday. This guy says, where the hell have you been, man? I'm glad you're here finally, but damn, sure took your time. Hashtag Ethgate. I got here as soon as I could. Turns out I thought I was helping some people create a better world who repaid me by trying to imprison me for four years to bury their sins with a little help from their three-letter friends. They never thought I'd be back. <laughs> and he puts the graphic, no one has ever escaped. Now, and I told him, I said, now you have a pissed off army to help you out. Game on. Um, and there's a, this, Mr. Huber has an interesting, um, had an interesting comment, which I agree with, by the way. If there really are three-letter agencies involved, which I always believed, how can we trust you? I can't say, I can't say why, but it somehow feels like you could profit so much more by playing us than supporting us. We have no insider knowledge like you have. I really want to believe you trust me. And and I, I agree. Look, trust but verify. Because, look, these people have unlimited power. They can throw him in a van and threaten him and, and do all kinds of things. All kinds of crazy things that, from what I've read. And all kinds of threats to the point that he and his attorney could easily say, okay, we'll work for you, and in return, you give us X, Y, and Z. I mean, you could totally, if there was enough on the line, you could totally see how something like that would be done. But we will give him the benefit of the doubt, but we will trust but ver verify. If it, is, if it is something like that, there's a lot of smart people out here, and it'll be figured out. Don't you worry. Um, John Deaton says, stay tuned. Now, uh, by the way, I'm not saying that that's what it is, okay? We're going to give Stephen Naryoff the benefit of the doubt, and we'll be the best friends he ever had out here if we don't smell any BS, okay? But trust but verify is pretty easy in this situation. All you got to do is have emails, all the different stuff. I have no, by the way, I have no communication with Stephen Naryoff whatsoever. He's retweeted some of my tweets. But I do not send messages back and forth with him or anything like that. 
Um, so that's the fact, Jack. Now, let's move on to keep covering the shadiness of, of what our government and the narrative media has been doing. So let's just recap. Bitcoin, there's an unknown Satoshi but the gov that the government has met with, it's Homeland Security, there's four of them, but they want to pretend that they didn't, okay? We've got Ethereum disguised whales in the illegal ICO, but the government leaves it alone. They pretend that they don't see this, okay? Give it a fake clear, uh, designation as a commodity. We've got FTX. There was Ukraine money laundering. There was all kinds of illegalities. There was shady spreadsheets with all kinds of organizational charts that were created by the Stanford Law dad out of Stanford and the mother was involved too. Nobody seems to be interested in all that. Government leaves it alone. And then once the fraud is uncovered, then they have no choice but to pretend to be going after Sam Bankman Freed. Tether, there's no audited financial statements, but the government leaves it alone. CNBC does their duty and covers it like it's just normal crypto news. Here's CNBC's coverage. <coughs> Talk about the top stories. Tether has resumed lending out its own stablecoins less than a year after it said it would reduce its secured loans to zero in 2023. That's according to the Wall Street Journal, which noted that the stablecoin issuer's latest quarterly financial update includes about $5.5 billion of loans as of June 30th, up from $5.3 billion in the prior quarter. Tether Holdings confirmed to the journal that it made new loans. We reached out to Tether, but didn't hear back right away. The spokesperson reportedly said that the company's goal is to prevent any significant depletion of customer liquidity or the need for them to sell their collateral at potentially unfavorable prices, which could result in losses. Tether, which is incorporated in the British Virgin Islands, notoriously does not publish audited financial statements or a complete balance sheet, which makes for an incomplete picture of the company's financial health. More of the story, folks. Everybody who the regulators, who are obvious targets for the regulators that they would immediately go after, they leave alone. You think that's a coincidence? <laughs> if you do, my igloo is still for sale in South Georgia. It will melt within 24 hours of your purchase, but it's the greatest igloo ever made. And then Altcoin Daily just happened to retweet, happened to tweet this out again today. This was going around a while back, but it's always good to remind everybody. FTX and Gary Gensler connection. Sam Bankman freed the CEO of FTX. Um, Caroline Ellison, who, who was his partner uh, in, and his uh, girlfriend or whatever, CEO, CEO of Alameda. Well, her dad was Glenn Ellison, who was the professor of economics at MIT, who was Gary Gensler's boss when he was at MIT. <laughs> I mean, these are the people that need to be investigated. And Gary and Glenn Ellison, not the people Gary's deciding to try to go after. What in the world? Then we've got this lie. Grayscale's trying to get a, a, an Ethereum ETF now, okay? And I said, hey, Grayscale, they must not have told you. XRP's the only digital asset with legal clarity. You may want to ditch that Ethereum idea. After all, the SEC won't even mention the Hinman speech or the fake decentralization prong of the Howey test that he and his friends made up to give the false appearance of regulatory clarity for the last few years. When XRP ETF, when relist the XRP trust, which they had before the lawsuit. What's really going on here? Grayscale is filed to launch a new Ether Futures ETF after it abandoned plans for a similar fund back in May at the height of the SEC crackdown on crypto. The move follows a wave of other applications from asset managers for ETFs that track Ether Futures, according to the Wall Street Journal, which added that an Ether Futures ETF has yet to be approved. Now, last month, Grayscale won its lawsuit against the SEC in regards to its spot Bitcoin ETF application. Now, Grayscale also offers an Ethereum trust investment vehicle. Okay, um, <laughs> this, this is pretty, I saw this going around um, and I thought that it, it was pretty good. Many of you may not remember Matthew Mellon. He died of a apparent drug overdose and he, he was like one of the largest, um, he had $1 billion in XRP at one time. The story goes that his XRP was lost, which I don't believe by the way. I think that his XRP is, is spread out around the world on probably I don't know about Ledger Nano S's, but some kind of hard wallet or wallet of some sort, maybe paper, who knows. 
Uh, I read an article one time that said that he had had put his XRP in, it, I can't remember if it was hard wallets or the codes, in places and spread it out around the world. Somebody like that obviously is sophisticated enough to have a plan in place when they die for it. Okay, Crypto is scary and dark. It's anti-American, says Mellon54. I'm pro-America, pro-business, and pro-bank. That's why I met with Ripple. I've always felt like... Sorry. I've always felt like somewhere behind Ripple in the early days was BNY Mellon. I've also always felt like somewhere behind PolySign in the early days, well, I haven't felt it, I know it. I mean, there's BNY Mellon, like long-time executives at PolySign that were BNY Mellon, like long-time BNY Mellon executives. So, but this is kind of why I came to this party, folks, because when I discovered crypto, I wasn't a teenager. I was old enough and had been around long enough to know that you're not going to replace the banks you're not gonna replace the powerful so anything crypto related that was working with them out of the gate is who I wanted to be affiliated with and that's what ripple did now um, I'm gonna save this for later I've already gone over I'll get into that I'm the digital asset investor I'm not an investment advisor this is for entertainment purposes only please subscribe hit the like button tell your friends and family that I always felt that the Mellon guy, the Matthew Mellon guy, knew what was up. Thanks for listening.